Radio Grade 12s. It's me, Stefan Klein, on how to EGD, and I'm checking in with you to hear how you are doing with your pet tasks for this year. Now, I've released a couple of episodes. I'm going to do a quick video today, specifically helping you how to evaluate your concepts that you've drawn before we go over to the working drawings and more videos detailing those steps and requirements. But in this video, I'd like to ask some feedback. Let me know how you're doing. Let me know if there's any pitfalls or uh, comments, questions that you might have so that I know how to respond in the upcoming videos. I appreciate you. I value you. I'm committed to seeing you make a success of this year's pet. So let's get going with this video discussion. Right here, grade 12 engineering learners, we are going to zoom in in this episode on how to select the best solution for you to go forward with your working drawings. Now, in my previous videos, I explained to you, of course, the different steps regarding research and coming up with your freehand drawings. And in this video, we now need to go through the process of selecting your best solution, which demonstrates that you have an in-depth understanding of the scenario within the context of this design brief specifications and constraints that was discussed. Now, how do we do this? On a separate page, make this an A3 page, okay? Compare and evaluate the two freehand solutions that you've come up with, okay? We want to determine which one do we move forward with. How do we do it? We create a table, okay? This is important. This is a requirement, a table with a minimum of six descriptive criteria. Creating and applying a simple rating scale, which I'll show you in a moment, to score each solution against each criteria. So we have to score these two drawings against each other. You have to then justify each score by describing the positive or negative aspects. So just a little bit of a description of each solution against each criteria. So you justify, you can't just give a score, you have to actually justify it. You have to complete the process by writing then at the end of this a comprehensive summary giving the reasons um, for your selected freehand solution. So just a, almost a summary of your thoughts. The summary must also include whether there were any late changes made to the selected freehand drawing solution or not. If there were, they must be clearly described. So it might be that after this process, you feel there's some changes I want to make, then you just need to list them in uh, uh, your actual uh, process of selecting. Let's look at the requirements from the checklist, okay, and it's also here at number four. Uh, this must be done separately, of course. You've got a potential 10 marks up for grabs. So, did you create a table for the selection process? If you did a table, you're going to get two out of two. Minimum of six descriptive criteria to compare and evaluate two out of two if you've gotten six, okay? Of course, you can use more, but less than six, you're not going to get your two. A simple rating scale created used to score each solution against each other. Do you have a rating scale? If yes, again, two out of two. You see how easy this is? Each score justified by describing a positive or negative aspect of each criterion. Have you described yes or no? Two out of two. And is there a comprehensive summary at the end with reasons for selecting, including if there were any late changes? Two out of two. Add that up. You're going to get your 10 out of 10. Let me show you a practical example. This was done by one of my learners last year, uh, doing their pet. All right, that's better. Okay, so it's numbered four, selecting of best solution, first mark. Nicely with a border, page number, etc. Then they've got specifications. Now they've list more than six. You can come up with your own six criteria in line with your specifications. Whatever they me maybe look at your specifications and pick six very important ones and then this rating scale the scale created is either a right or a wrong so it's a tick for a yes and a cross for no and they've just evaluated is the first concept does it fall within the 180 square meters specified yes tick concept two ticks that as well okay there was a specification in this pad bedroom facing the west for afternoon sun in this case, concept one did not meet that requirement. It got a cross. Concept two did, got, got the tick. And so you can compare them. And in the end, there's a score, people. This is what they want. They want a score here. Concept two is a clear winner. 11 out of 11. Uh, concept one, of course, 9 out of 11. So we see here concept two is a superior one. Then on the right-hand side, 
you have to justify your score. Very clearly, you can do it with headings, and that helps you to get your, in, your, your um, information correct. So justify the score. Okay, both these concepts were within the total square meter limit, so both got their marks. Okay, concept one in this case didn't fall, uh, f uh, don't f all face the west. However, in concept two, all the bedrooms would get the heat of the afternoon sun, and that's why the requirement was met. Okay, so just a short description with your total score, and in the end, a comprehensive summary of your final uh, 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 thoughts on the selection process. And if you do it in a simple format like that, you are absolutely going to nail this. All right, that said, remember in my introduction I said, give me some feedback, questions, comments that you might have. Please do so in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. I value you and I want to see you make a good success of your pet for this year. All the best. Now it is your turn.